Well, hello again. Uh, good morning, good evening, good uh, afternoon, whichever it happens to be whenever you tune in. Once again, I have my mask on to demonstrate that uh, we're still under uh, orders to wear masks when we go out in public. I am going to take it off again because obviously I sound muffled and it's very uncomfortable to speak that way. Anyway, so we are back. Um, I hope y'all had a good week. And I hope uh, things are going well for you at home and that you're getting your school work all done. I did hear this week, and I know y'all did too, that school is canceled for the rest of the year. Well, at least in-person school. I know y'all all did diligently studying at home. However, you won't be going up to the school anymore this year. So, yeah, plenty of time. Now, um, I wanted to... Before we, I'm gonna change, do add a little something to this this week. Before we get started, I want to, um, maybe throw in a little talk about some of the things, some different things, maybe about the books, of the Bible, that type of thing. Before we get started, so this week, da da, I'm gonna talk about the books of the Bible a little bit. That's um, I don't know if you can see over there, but it's got the books of the Bible all listed out. And, and the Mr. Tom has done a song with y'all, some of you, when you were younger. And, and I think we're going to, once we get back together, we're going to talk him into doing it again. So you can learn all the books of the Bible in their order. We're not going to do that today. I just wanted to point out, if you have your Bible with you, I know it has a table of contents. And that's how most of you these days find the books and the verses that we're reading, which is nothing wrong with that. However, it's a good idea if you start learning where they are, where you can just turn right to it. It's much faster and it's, and it's better because that means it shows that you're actually looking at your Bible, studying your Bible more. Well, first, of course, is there's the, the big thing is there are two different sections of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is about the beginning with Genesis and, and the, the Israelites uh, going through the wilderness, ended up in, in uh, Israel, in Jerusalem, in that area, and the different things they have. Uh, then they then they have uh, the books of the Kings and the Chronicles of all the things that happen and the Psalms. I'm going through that very quickly because we'll talk about that some other time more in more uh, in more detail. But then they have the prophets, and then they have uh, the big ones like uh, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Ezekiel, those. Uh, Prophets, and then you get down to a group of prophets they call the minor prophets. It's not because what they say is important, it's just because their books are very short. Then you get down to the last book of the Old Testament, which is Malachi, which you'd be surprised to find that there's 200 years later before anything else is recorded. And the New Testament starts, the writings of the New Testament start from 200 years later. So uh, then the New Testament is broken down into sections. The first uh, section is the Gospels. That's the first four books of the Bible. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then there's Acts, which is a book written by Luke, uh, who wrote the, uh, the third Gospel. And it's basically just a continuation of where he left, leaves, leaves off in his book of the Gospel. It talks about the early church and how it grew. And we'll actually be uh, have the part of our lesson come from that today. And then you get to what they call the epistles, which is the writings, which means that's when like Paul, the first several from Romans all the way through uh, uh, Philemon is written by Paul to different churches. Well, let me back up. That's not completely correct. Through the Thessalonians is uh, to different churches. And then he writes to Timothy, two books, to Titus and to Philemon. And then there's the book of Hebrews, which we don't know who wrote for sure who wrote it. There's some that say that it could have even been written by our own uh, St. Barnabas, by Barnabas. As we, if you remember from past lessons, his name was actually Joseph, and he was called Barnabas because that means encourager. Okay. So uh, then after that, you get uh, the, the books from uh, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, which uh, John, that's the same John that wrote uh, the Gospel of John, and Peter is the is Simon Peter the uh, apostle. Didn't write any, didn't write a gospel, but he did write two books. 
and James, which is not the Apostle James, it's pro probably the brother of Jesus who wrote that. And then you have Revelation, well, excuse me, you have Jude, which is also a brother of Jesus who wrote that book. And then you get to Revelation, which is about the end times. And it's, that's written by John as well. Okay, So in our lessons that we've been doing this past year, starting this year, we're going through um, basically the part of the um, um, liturgy that's going to be preached on this Sunday. It's, for me, it's coming up. For you, it might be you know, the day before or whatever, but the, this Sunday's um, uh, liturgy is take, we're going to have parts of it that are going to be in our lesson today. And so, uh, you know, if you remember, typically, we, well, not typically, the liturgy starts off with colic, and we'll go on that, through that in a minute. And then they have re the readings, which are uh, typically an Old Testament reading, and then, then they're reading from Psalms, and then they'll have a... Um, an epistle, and then they'll have uh, the time when everybody gets, you know, the acolytes are walk down the aisle and they, we sing the song, and then they stand up there and, and someone holds the book and Deacon John reads a gospel, okay? So that's that's basically what uh, the order of liturgy is, and that's what we're talking about is the books of the Bible. We don't have a psalm in here, but we have the books of the Bible. As I said earlier, I mean, we have the readings from the Bible, we have the colic that we're going over today. Now, the um, typically, I said there's an Old Testament reading, and then they have a psalm. Uh, during this season between Easter, well, this is the Easter season, but during the entire Easter season, up through uh, Pentecost, we're going to be uh, reading from Acts instead of the Old Testament. All right, let's jump in and get started on the colic. I'll read this for you. Almighty God, you gave your only son to be for us both a, sacri a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly living. Give us the grace, thankfully, to receive this, his inestimable benefit, and daily to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, and as we do each week, I'm going to pull out a word that you might not under, understand uh, and give a definition of it. It just happens to be a word that's I have a little bit of a problem pronouncing for some odd reason, but it's inestimable, inestimable and it means value beyond measure or priceless. Okay, and then as Always, we're going to have a word of the day, which doesn't come from colic, but it's just something for you, a new word for you to know, and it's called cincture. And that's rope-like, ribbon-like article worn with vestments, you know, the clothes that the priests, that Father Andrew and, and Father Greg and Deacon John wear at the front, uh, encircling the body around or above the waist. That, I guess that's a little, that's a little rope that tie, holds, their, holds their vestments up. Holds them, holds them together, okay? So, this week, our readings, uh, is from, the first one is from Acts again, and that's um, 2, 14a, that's the same as last week, just to get you started, and then Acts 2, 36 through 47, and then it's, I'll read that again, Acts 2, 36 through 47, and then 1 Peter 1, 13, 13 through 25, 1 Peter 1, 13 through 25, and Luke 24, 13 through 35. Now remember, when, you, when I give you a verse, a chapter, it's the big number on the, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the book. It's the big number, it's the, fir it's the first number I give you, and then the next numbers are the verses, and those little bitty numbers within the within that chapter, okay? Within, uh, so. Now, I am going to, actually, I'm going to read Acts to you to, for you today, so you won't need to read that before I get started, but for the other two, 1 Peter and Luke, I'm going to 
give you a chance. You can pause you, the re replay and then read those, to, the, read those two uh, chat, those two uh, readings, and then we'll get back and talk about it. Okay, so what we have, I'm going to go ahead and start off with Acts. No, I'm going to start off with Luke. Luke 24. Now, Luke 24 is about uh, the, the, it's Easter Day. It's uh, when uh, it's after Mary Magdalene has gone to the tomb and come back and said it's empty. And then John and uh, Peter run to the tomb and they see that it's empty. And then uh, they, they go back to the house and... Uh, it, 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 at some point, two of his disciples, not one of the, not one of the twelve, but two of his disciples, uh, decide to take a, a, a trip, which in those days meant they were walking, and they were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is a town about seven miles uh, away from Jerusalem, and as they're walking along, they're talking about everything that happened, and obviously they're. They're confused, maybe a little sad, because they not they don't fully understand what's happened yet. And as they're walking along, someone starts walking along with them. And we know who it is. Yes, we know it's Jesus. But they didn't recognize him. For some reason, uh, he, he, they were not able to recognize him at that point. Their eyes were clouded, so to speak. So as they're walking along, uh, and Jesus walks up to them and asks them what's going on. And while they're looking so sad and they say, don't you, haven't you heard what, about what's going on? Have you, have you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened? And then they tell him about how they've been following Jesus of Nazareth and how he'd done all these wonderful things and that they thought he was going to be the redeemer. And then, uh, then he was, then he was captured and crucified. And they said, and not only that, but, uh, some of our some of the disciples have went to the tomb and came back and said that it was empty and that he was alive. But you know we don't really understand what's going on. And so Jesus says to them, uh, well, "Weren't you? Don't you understand what was going on? Don't you understand?" Uh, let me tell you exactly how he said it. And he says to them. O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things, enter into his glory? And then after that, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he began to tell all the everything in there that said pointed to uh, a, a Savior coming and how he would suffer and, and ultimately uh, be uh, executed and then rise again. And they... He talked, he went, it's a lot, that's a lot to go through. And they talked the whole way to, to Emmaus. And when they about and when they got there, he was gonna keep on going, but they asked him to know, stop, stop. It's getting late in the day, stop with us, stay with us, and we will uh, you know, you can have dinner with us. So they went in and they sat down to the table, and Jesus they get, and Jesus took the bread and broke it, and as soon as he did that, they recognized that it was Jesus. And he vanished and was gone. Well, they looked at each other, and they were most excited, obviously. And they and they even said, "Didn't we feel something inside when he started talking with us?" And you know what they did? They were so excited they jumped up and they ran all the way back to Jerusalem. And they found the others. And when they got there, the first thing everybody was saying was, "Jesus has appeared to Peter." And then they said, well, "Guess what happened to us? We've talked to him as well." So that, um, that was a quite exciting time. That was one of the many times that Jesus appeared to some of the disciples. Uh, he didn't appear to everybody, but he appeared to quite a few of the disciples at different times. And um, then we go to get to Acts, which kind of is more appropriate for us to to read that um, beginning with Pentecost, which now Pentecost is, was a Jewish holiday, which meant 50 days, 
It's 50, it was a holiday 50 days after the Passover. And uh, to us, it's, we're not so, when we celebrate Pentecost, we're not celebrating the Jewish holiday. We're celebrating what happened on that day uh, with the Holy Spirit coming on the, on the 11 disciples and them speaking in tongues and prophesying and teaching and a lot of people come to the Lord. Okay, that's, the, um, that, that's what Pentecost means to us. But the reason that uh, it was, a, the probably reason it happened on Pentecost, the reason that God planned it that way is because Pentecost was a major holiday. A lot of people came into town. So there were people from all over the world, all over the country uh, of Israel and also many different countries around the world had come in. And if you remember, we talked about that last week when uh, Paul, when, when well, I'm excuse Paul wasn't at the, that, when the Holy Spirit came upon the 12, I mean, 11 disciples, it appeared as tongues of flame above each one of them came on them and they all started speaking in tongues and started prophesying and, um, and talking loudly and, and the earth shook and everybody thought what is going on and if you remember some people uh, even accused them of being drunk already at, at the, because they were babbling to them uh, but uh, Peter said no we're not drinking it's only I think about 9 o'clock in the morning is what we decided it was last week so when what they were doing though was they were speaking and people from all these different countries who spoke different languages were able to understand them so that we ended up last week with Peter preaching to all of the uh, all all the people that were gathered in their own language, and so our uh, reading today picks up at uh, Acts two thirty six. All right, and I'm going to like I said I'm going to read that for y'all. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus. Jesus, whom you crucified. So he's speaking. These are all Jewish people, uh, or and maybe people that are uh, that they, they're maybe becoming Jewish. I don't know the exact term for that, but anyway, they're mainly Jewish people that they're talking to, and um, he's telling them that uh, you that you you crucified him. You're the one that caused him crucified. Now I want to just talk about that just a second. Back up a little bit. So they, he says they crucified Jesus. They caused him to be crucified. But if you think about it, I crucified Jesus. You crucified Jesus. Because if we, if we had needed, uh, if just one of us needed him to die to, take, to save us, he would have done that for us. And it's all of our sins that he, is, he, he died for. So anytime, if you've ever sinned, then he died for you. Okay? So let me read on. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off and everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So, that, so those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So the Holy Spirit was so powerful on them that when they preached to the people and that, and that it changed their hearts and 3,000 were saved that day, became Christians. They weren't called Christians yet, but that's, that's what happened. They became Christians. And then we read on, it says, and they devoted, that mean they, they mean these new uh, followers, these new uh, newly uh, baptized Christians. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed 
were together and had all things in common. That means they lived together and they just took care of each other and they basically didn't know anything. They all owned it all together. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So, that's a, that's a good point to talk about. These, they were living together, they were taking care of each other, they were happy, they were generous, they were loving, and they, they were so attracted that, uh, they, that, they had, that God and that they, that they found favor with all the people. That means even though the people outsiders said, man, there's something great about them, something good about them. And people wanted to be part of them and kept joining them, so there were more Christians were added to them at all, all the time, okay? So that is, um, that's a quite an amazing story. Uh, like I say, we're heading the ne over the next uh, six Sundays, which is six Sundays of Easter after Easter day itself, and then it'll culminate in, uh, in, in Pentecost, and I'm sure we'll have a more specific lesson about that day. But this is, this is basically talking about the beginning of the church, the beginning of uh, uh, the, the Christian church. Okay, and how it got started. The other reading we had was was First Peter, and if you read it at home, I, well, I'll point out to you that they, they think this was written maybe thirty years later. Um, so if you read this, you see that uh, that Peter is basically telling them, uh, yeah, it's. It's not, you know, there's going to be hardships. It's not going to be all easy, but you just need to stick with it and, and stay, um, stay focused on God and on Jesus and what they've done for you. So that's, this is basically him telling them to keep up how excited they were uh, when they first got started. This is um, uh, quite a bit later, and the church is growing, and people, you know, it's, I, another thing to talk about, people at at that point, thought that Jesus was going to come back very soon. They thought he might come back any day. So uh, after a while, they got to thinking, what's going on? Well, how, how come Jesus hadn't come, come back yet? And he's basically telling them, just stick to it. Just keep your faith. Keep trusting God. Keep being uh, holy because God is holy. It says that in there. Uh, that's one of the um, great, uh, it's a quote that Peter does. It's one of the great uh, verses from the Bible. You shall be holy, for I am holy. That's what God tells them. Okay. Now, uh, see, you see how these all kind of tie together. Um, we have uh, the Easter day when uh, the disciples are just now beginning to find out that Jesus actually rose from the dead. Now, if you remember when we went through that through Lent, Jesus had told them that he was going to be uh, betrayed into the hands of the Jews and that uh, that they would that he would suffer that they would torture him and that he would be crucified and he would die uh, he told them that over and over and they for some reason didn't it didn't register with them I don't think it's because they're just dumb people I just don't think that that's what they were expecting they were expecting uh, Jesus to be a, a they expect the Messiah to be one who comes and just starts the kingdom of God immediately but he had told them over and over this is what was what this was what was going to happen. And so now that it has happened, it's slowly being to sink, sink into them. You know, last week we talked about uh, Thomas. You know, he's got the nickname Doubting Thomas and about uh, how when Jesus appeared at that time, um, he, he appeared to the disciples. Thomas wasn't there and he said, I'm not gonna believe it unless I touch Jesus' scars in his hands and put my hand in his side where the, where the spear was thrust. And so eight days later, when Thomas is with the rest of the disciples, again, Jesus appears in the middle of the room when the door's locked and says, Thomas, uh, put your hand in my, in my, in my, in my scars, in my, in my uh, hands, put your hand in my side, uh, believe, don't doubt. 
and uh, and of course Thomas says he believes, and Jesus says, "Blessed are those who you have seen and you believe, and blessed are those who believe who have not seen." So uh, that these are all the stories that we're reading. Like that was from John last week, from Luke this week about him appearing to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, um, and then it's going to ultimate. Uh, it's going to ultimately end up with him uh, telling them to wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon them and that they'll do great things. So that is really quickly going through in a quick fashion what the readings are about this week. Uh, we, every week we have questions, and it's a little awkward to do when you're watching this on tape and you can't ask questions. I hope that if you have any that they get answered, that, you know, that that God helps uh, me to say the right word so that you can uh, have your questions answered. But if you don't, if you have one that's really pressing you, ask your uh, whoever's with you, your older brother, your your mom, dad, aunt, uncles, grandparents, whatever. Uh, ask them, and if, and if y'all don't, you're not satisfied, send us a message. Send it to uh, Miss Jennifer at the church, and we'll we'll see about getting your question answered. Okay. So, uh, the first question is always, is what is each passage about? And we've gone through them, so I'm going to skip over that question. And then it said, the next question, it says, in Luke, what do you think the two men felt when they first met Jesus on the road? Well, we kind of talked about that a little bit, just going through it very quickly. But when they were walking on the road, they were kind of sad, and they, uh, and they were confused. So when Jesus, I think when Jesus uh, first met them on the road, I think they were more self-absorbed, more worried about what they were thinking, how sad they were, to really think too much about who this might be. And and uh, as I said, their eyes, they kept, they were unable to, to know that it was Jesus at that time. And uh, what was Jesus' response to them? He, uh, when they told, when they told him all that was going on and why they were sad, why they were, what was upsetting them. He basically told them that they <clears throat> didn't they uh, believe didn't they understand didn't they believe all the, what the, the prophets Moses the prophets had said and that, didn't they understand that this had to happen and then to prove it to them he went through the whole Bible the whole ver each verse that, that dealt with uh, the, the uh, Messiah coming and suffering and dying and and uh, being resurrected. On the whole trip, which you know, walking seven miles can take you a while, so it took them a while. Uh, what was significant about the moment when the man recognized Jesus? Okay, so that might have been uh, kind of lost a little bit in, in the way I quickly told the story. But if you remember when we talked, when I talked earlier, that they recognized Jesus when they when he broke the bread. And so what's, how's that, uh, what's that symbolic of? You remember at the Last Supper, before he was went into the garden and was captured and, and uh, put on trial, that he had, had the, the Last Supper with the disciples and he broke bread with the disciples. So that's what, that's what that symbolizes. And how do you think the two men felt after Jesus left? Well... Obviously, they're excited. They're excited enough to jump up and run all the way back in Jerusalem and uh, to tell everybody what was going on. And then they found out that uh, other people had, had seen Jesus as well. Uh, of course, they kind of, they tried to cover a little bit. It acted like typical people. Like, didn't we kind of have an idea that was him? No, they didn't. But that's kind of the way they, way they did on that. So, uh, not to say. This would be the time where we'd ask questions, we'd talk and go into different details. I'm looking so forward to when we can get back up here and meet in, per in person. I miss you guys so much. Um, I enjoy your questions. I enjoy talking with you and having fun with you. Uh, but uh, like I said, I think um, uh, this is better than nothing. It gives you something to do while you're spending all your time not going to school <laughs> in the next few weeks. Uh, I think you ought to um, uh, be reminded of why we're able to do this and why you're able to watch church on on Sundays and see different uh, things, different lessons during the week. And that's because uh, of all the work that uh, Father Andrew has done 
to bring this to you, to, to set up the, the uh, YouTube station and the channel and, and doing all the work to get uh, the sound better on the, on the, on the sermons and, and on the uh, church services and everything else. So I uh, thank you that y'all all take time when you're saying your prayers to, to say a prayer of thanks for all that he's done for us over this, uh, during this entire time of the, uh, <coughs> of the, um, of the crisis of that, the pandemic. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to say a prayer and then we'll be done. All right, and we'll see you next week. Dear Lord, Thank you for watching over us today and keeping us safe and during this time, these hard times and bad times. Please keep our, our families safe and us safe. Please help the uh, uh, children who are watching to have uh, questions and have them answered and to study the Bible and be energized to know more about what, what's going on in the Bible and what, what Jesus did for us. Please be with uh, all of us as we... Uh, are getting impatient, want to get back to normal, but we know we can't. Help us be patient, stay at home, take care of each other. Knowing that it's not just us that, that, that uh, could be hurt, but we may be hurting others if we uh, act too soon. So please protect us, watch over us, and keep us well. All these things I ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.